ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله العظيم من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise him and we seek his aid and forgiveness. And we seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil of our nafs, from the evil of ourselves, and from our sinful actions. Whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, none have the ability to misguide. And whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala misguides, none has the ability to guide. And we bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we bear witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and messenger. Whom he will believe, fear Allah as he deserves to be feared and die not except as a Muslim. Whom he will believe, fear Allah and say good sayings. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive your sins and He will correct your actions and give you guidance and whomever and whomever obeys Allah and His Messenger, indeed, He is one of those whom are successful. By the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah have given us our intellect to distinguish us between the creation that he created, but not as a test. The creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the living things other than mankind and Satan kind are not tested. And the distinguishing factor of that is the intellect, is our ability to distinguish between right and wrong, evil and good, bad and right. This is where the test comes. That is why nobody after hitting puberty, being adult and having the ability to think is excused by Allah, except those who have never got the message or been reminded of the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are called in Islam Ahlul Fatra or the people of Fatra whom their test is going to be in the day of judgment. But all other mankind and Satan alike are tested in this life to use their intellect to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, regardless of the intellect of the individual, He gave everybody the minimum amount to get to normal. So some people, yes, are more intelligent than others, but all of them have the amount of intellect that they can reach and get in relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and understand the message of Allah. This is the first thing. And by using this, we get closer to Allah. We all know Islam. We all know how we can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitate for the individual or the mu'min to come closer to him. And this is the concept of tawfiq. Tawfiq has to come with intellect. If we depend only on our intellect, then we will not get anywhere. You also have to have dependence. If you will, we can call it the intellect of the heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Alahum qulubun la yaqiluna biha? Do they have hearts they do not ponder with? Admonishing. That always the intellect comes to have come to have with the heart. It has to come together. Especially in faith. So for example, you have something your intellect is not able to reach about religion. Like the ancient things that we believe in as part of our faith, but we have not seen it. Then we use our intellect not to see them, but to recognize that whomever this information is coming from is Allah. That I believe in with certainty. Then whatever he says is definitely correct. Why? Because I went back to whom is saying it to me, even if I don't see it. Just like the Prophet ﷺ, when he tells us something, sometimes, alhamdulillah, he talks about things that happen before we die. And they come to happen with certainty. A lot of things. Even in the Quran, like the verse that says that the Romans will be victorious over the Persians in few years, and so on from the Sunnah of the Prophet as well. These things already happened. How about the things that already did not happen? Also, they will come the same as those who have come before us. This is certainty. That is why we believe in Jannah and now and Day of Judgment with complete intellect. Not only with the comparison of things that happened in the past, not only because, alhamdulillah, we have been able to observe a lot of things in the religion, no. But it's actually because it is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why a lot of the times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is admonishing the kuffar in the Day of Judgment. And they said, They said, if he used to hear or use our intellect, we would not have been from the people of Sa'ir of Nahr. We just think about this world came, where did it come from? Right? Where did it come from? If you look at anything around you, you will never think that it actually just popped out this microphone, you will never think that it just came by itself. And it's not as complex as the trees. It is not as complex as the clouds, as the sun, as the perfection of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then would anybody saying with the least amount of intellect think that this just came ray arised from no nothing? Or by coincidence, arised itself? All these three chances are, are impossible. Nothing is nothing to produce something. And coincidence does not make an excellent process of anything. For example, if a car made an accident today, coincidentally, it will not do it every single day perfectly at the same time. The sun or the earth is going with a precise realm every day around the sun who is moving it and how is it moved and where did this laws came from that are just making everything perfect they're making everything perfect in this universe if one of this complementary natural system is taken away all of them would not work if you take clouds winds mountains oxygen all of them wouldn't work if you just take one of them for example if there is no winds, clouds will not form rain. There will not be oceans, there will not be plants, there will not be animals, there will not be you. 
If there is no wind, you will never eat anything. And look at everything in the universe and think about it the same way. All of these things are perfectly put by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He made it clear, everybody is able to see. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala executes those who do not have their mind. Meaning that the, the, the Prophet said, The pen is being lifted from three. Meaning that these three people will not be accounted for what they do. The first one is the kid until they hit puberty. And the sleeping person until they wake up. Because they're not using their intellect to pray. And they accidentally did not miss prayer. Right? You're sleeping, you did not, you always come to pray, but today you just slept over slept. Like it happened to the time of the Prophet. To the Prophet والسلام, and Bilal and the other Sahaba. They were coming from a battle and they stayed at a certain place and they slept. Nobody woke up to do Adam. And when the Prophet woke up, he got a little mad. And he asked Bilal, why haven't you made Adam? Then Bilal told the Prophet والسلام, the same thing that I have taken you, it took me the sleep he means. Then the Prophet says, said, this place is not good for us, the shaitan has been here, let's go. Right? This shows us a lot of lessons, but this is not our main topic. And the third one, the third one is the one whom inflicted with intellectual madness, majnoon. If somebody have a disease, a mental disease, that they're not able to distinguish between things, and their intellect is not sane, is not sound, then Allah would not account them. And likewise, <clears throat> also the mistake, because you did not have your intellect at that time, because you didn't do it intentionally. Or forgetfulness, the same thing. Or heedlessness. Three things. Even within a sane person, it happens to them. A mistake, or being heedful, heedless, or being forgetting something. If you forget, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the intentions behind these things. Somebody might try to justify something, I forgot, but Allah knows between you and him, right? These are three things. And subhanAllah, I wanna divert within the topic of intellect and see why our different people have different amount of certainty and how to, can we try to cultivate this certainty so the first thing we find is that we are societal creatures anything surrounding us or surrounding us affects us so whatever a person hears or listens to or do something with one of their five senses this with no doubt affect them so whatever you choose to do during your day regardless of what it is if it's halal or haram even if it is halal and it has no benefit if it's continued all the time it cannot make a person righteous even if it's halal that doesn't mean you do not do halal things but you do not Take all of your time doing everything about self-interest and leave what you were created for. You can do anything with your time, but what differentiates the ones 
the, the ones who have certainty from the ones who don't is that these people use their time. They take advantage of it. Faith does not increase accidentally. You wake up and wow, mashallah, you have faith. No. But it happens by putting work and by seeking knowledge. Since we value things by the amount of knowledge we had about them. For example, you would not see a random person outside and subhanAllah say, I love them. No. To love something, you have to know what it is. To love Allah, you have to study who is Allah and study his religion. Right? That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah says, Allah raised the ranks of those who believed and those who have knowledge are ranks or levels. And Allah in this verse related the amount of faith to the amount of knowledge. He says, Allah raised the ranks of the believers and then he related it to knowledge. He says, He related the ranks of knowledge to the ranks of believing. Since the appreciation of something is by knowing what we are appreciating. To value something by knowing what are we valuing. To love something by knowing what are we loving. And some of the phenomena are the things that we see around us, not only by what we do from our senses, but also from the broader society. Whatever people do, we lean to think like them. Why? Because we do not have something else to think about. This is the only source we are getting information that is why a lot of the people they would be strict to their country my country people are the best why because they didn't go out when you travel you appreciate things there was a study on this exact matter where different people were presented to say their ideas about different countries and a lot of them were very leaning to themselves and they start none of them said I don't like my country all of them said you know my neighboring country is in you know and then after a few days they conducted for them a genetic test to say where are they really from I mean the percentages of their backgrounds after the result came a lot of them actually cried because that certain country they thought bad of the same countries they thought bad of happened to be they are 30 percent from them or 40 percent am i actually from that country subhanallah my great grandfather was from there then after that result, boom, they change their opinion about the whole country. You get what I mean? We are making our judgments based on very fragile opinions, very weak opinions. Just because we are something, or my family is something that doesn't have any objective conclusion. This is more subjective, right? SubhanAllah al and the reason I'm mentioning this example is because faith is very related to this issue as well. Is that now we have a political ideology in this country that is carrying all the people's opinions and interests, which is mainly liberalism and individualism. 
And then a lot of people views now, whether they know this or they study it or not, they have these opinions, even if they didn't study it, because they are within this society. And all of the information they're getting is from it. If you see somebody in China, their views are communist. Right? The issue with that, when we relate it to our faith, what happens is, you, a lot of people are starting to try to liberalize Islam in their mind. You know, Allah is telling this, but you know, they try to compromise so many things. Why? Because they want to say, you know, I'm going to balance between Islam and this. But this is now association. Shirk, but not with Allah. Shirk with the rulings of Allah. With your opinions within Allah's book. Allah admonished this so hard and He called it hypocrisy. He said, do you believe in part of the book and you leave others, the other part? Allah says, Allah says, the consequence of this to whomever of you does this, except afflictions and calamities and adversities in this life, وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ In the Day of Judgment, they will be returned to the most severe punishment. Why? Because when a person is in, in the middle, they're not right or left, they become a very bad image for Islam. And they start doing the opposite of da'wah. They are walking and people are receiving Islam from them thinking that they're actual good Muslims and they destroy more than the what they built and that is why it is responsibility when somebody claims themselves to be Muslim is to act it out otherwise people are going to perceive Islam is what you're doing and what I'm doing that's why we are ambassadors of Islam ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who listen and follow the rest Ibn Khaldun is one of the fathers if he is not the father of sociology. He says, Al Maglubu Daiman Mulaun Bitakafati Lalik. The defeated is always impressed with the culture of the victorious. This is so important because now our youth, when they see any type of economical development in a place or even the adults, they think because this country or this place is more economically better, that means their ideologies is better. They are not distinguishing between money and idea, right? Money does not mean what you think of is the truth. Why? Because China is completely different from America, for example. And they completely have different opposing views, but they both have money, right? And that's why we say, Correlation does not equal causation. If something correlates, that's not what they co what causes them. If two people have the same knowledge, or they have something same amount of money, for example, doesn't mean they got the money from the same place. If two people have economy, or two countries have economy, that means not, doesn't mean because they're ideologies. Economy is on uh, a side. And then morals and the truth is on another side. You working hard is something, and what is in your mind is something else. 
This is something outside and this is something inside. Why am I saying this? This, this, this uh, separation is not made by a lot of minds. And then they start incorporating ideas outside of Islam thinking that this is what should have been happening or this should be in Islam. When we look at history, when the most dominant places were incorporating different ideas, also people started thinking of it in that way. Right? And I will end with this. There is a quote from a book. One of the German um, some of the German thinkers in about 50 years ago or more wrote a book that says Allah is unlike that right, what, what is that? basically the book was talking about يعني, from 100 years things started changing very fast and people started thinking about things right but what happened is that she is an author and she quoted in one in, in her book one of the christian missionaries and he was saying in the quote in what means that he is very frustrated with his fellow Christian priests and those who are seeking knowledge in Christianity. Why is he frustrated? He said that when the Muslim empire were, was very development, uh, were very developed, and the Christians started to try to learn Arabic. Why? Because the Arabs were the most developed and they started to challenge themselves and do poetry in Arabic and they started being good in Islamic culture they were impressed in Islam and this changes from place to place whenever that place takes victory whenever that place seems to be more developmental people started thinking in their way and they leave their objective thinking to subjective thinking they started thinking now if something happened in a different country people are gonna go and be like oh this country is because it had these ideas that's why it happens. And this happens in history all the time, it goes around. Now, if, I, if, if, if our Muslim countries became, all of them uh, developed a lot of that, people are gonna go back, just like that. That's why we should always stick to the truth. The truth is one does not change like that. Not every 10 years, Allah is, Allah is one. Allah is one all the time, and Islam is one regardless of, of where we are, whether we are alone, whether you are alone in a village, you are a Muslim, Islam stays as the truth all the time and the truth does not change now or in the past or in the future we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cultivate Iman in our hearts and to elevate Yaqeen in our hearts we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who follow the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who follow the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم إنا نسألك من الخير كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم اللهم آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وفي العذاب النار صلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين.